Hey fish friends, how's it going? Hope you're doing well, Zenzo from Tozawa Tanks. I thought today would be kind of a fun thing to go around and talk about some of the various aquariums down here that we have changed. Let's talk about the Tanganyikan tank first, this 125 gallon tank. I love it. This has been everything that I've expected it to be and more. The Universal Rocks background was perfect. The mixing of the fish is working out. The scape is exactly how I envisioned it, although a little bit better actually. And as I shared in that previous video, which you can watch if you click on this link up here, but a few of you had mentioned like, you know, the shell dwellers digging. Yes, like I've been keeping them for years. I know they dig. So I purposefully made the substrate super deep where the vowel is and where some of the plants are. Um, and there's root tabs in there. And uh, so I have not had any issues with plants being uprooted because I didn't put like shells right next to the plants and I gave them lots of substrate to kind of hang on to. We talked about, you know, maybe I'll add some cyprochromus uh, down the road, kind of a good open water dwelling fish that I think will look really good in this tank. So overall, super happy with everything. The filtration's good and I just look forward to it kind of growing and maturing and doing even better. So now let's talk about the other tank that has the Universal Rocks 3D background and that's a 90 gallon peacock tank. I love it with the 3D background. It looks so much better. The fish are just popping as far as the coloration just because you have that really dark background. I don't have that algae issue which I had before. There's a few hiding spots which is good. It's always good to have a few hiding spots when you have pretty aggressive fish that like to ch chase each other around. It just kind of took a tank that I was not loving the way it looked and now I'm super happy again. So sometimes you just need kind of a, a refresh. It's like having a home and you're looking at that kitchen, you're like, ah, this kitchen is just dated and not great. And then you, you know, put on some new countertops and new appliances or new cabinetry or paint them or whatever. And it just looks so much better. And that's how I feel with some of these decor with the 3D backgrounds. It kind of just makes everything look new and cool and refreshed and yeah, just like it. So anyway, moving on to the uh, Solosite tank here. So here we have my Pseudotrophia Solosai or Chindango Solosai, depending on where you sit uh, in that camp. Um, so here we have uh, a 75 gallon acrylic tank. It's looking really good, looking really clear. There's a bunch of new rock on the background here. That's all dry rock, uh, which is basically like dry coral, dead coral. And that was in the 29 gallon Tanganyikan tank before and it was just covered, covered, covered with algae and it's impossible to get algae off of a porous hard surface like coral. So I just kind of left it there. I mean, I would scrub it with a brush or a toothbrush. It just wouldn't come off. So chemically, yes, you could do that. Changing my water conditions would do that. Um, or just throwing them in a tank with Mbuna did it, does, it, does it as well as they actually ate all of the algae off of that uh, coral. So um, I put it in there because it looks really good. It, it also helps with the water quality because coral will help with buffering. So African cichlids liking harder, high pH water it really helps to kind of stabilize it and keep it where I want it. And also because the coral is very porous and has like lots of little crevices and holes, it allows small fish to hide in there. Now. They're not very small fish, but when they have fry, they're mouth brooders. So the female will pick up the eggs when spawning and hold them until the eggs hatch in her mouth. And then you have these little, little tiny babies swimming around in her mouth and then she spits them out. This gives them a chance to hide and not be chased by a larger fish that will eat them. Overall, really happy with this tank. Uh, nothing much changing. We are gonna take some of these fish and put them upstairs. Probably what I'll do is I'll take a female that's holding, put her in a quarantine tank, let her spit naturally, then take those fry, grow them out and put them upstairs in my other Tanganyikan tank, which is gonna change. So now we're at the 29 gallon aquarium that used to have my uh, redfin calvus and my uh, gelidochromus in here, which are now in the 125. And I took them all out, obviously put them in there. And this tank was just kind of sitting empty for a few weeks. I decided just to throw in some substrate, some more substrate and put in some plants. So I just had some jungle val, that's val scenario that was in one of my other aquariums. Pulled that out, transplanted it in here left the snails and everything. And I'm just kind of letting this grow. I don't know what fish are gonna go in here yet. I have no idea what fish are gonna go in here other than all I know is that I'm just going to have jungle val in here and I'm gonna let that grow up. Maybe we'll get like a uh, jungle val forest. And once I kind of see how the, the tank is uh, doing, then I'll figure out what kind of fish 
might go in this 29 gallon tank. So if you have an idea about what might go well in a 29 gallon, let me know down below in the comments because uh, yeah, I'm looking for some ideas. So uh, here we have the 60 gallon breeder. This is the first time I've ever used a 60 gallon breeder. I think they're relatively new to the aquarium industry. Maybe they've been out for a couple of years. So I finally went ahead and took the 220s down that had the shell dwellers in here and put the 60 gallon tank. Now, the reason why we went with the 60 breeder instead of like a normal 75, which is probably what I would have put here in this four foot spot, is because we have this cool sign behind me, right? So we've got this sign and if I had a 75 gallon tank right here, it's gonna be like this tall and I don't want it to cover the sign that I love looking at. Now, what I did is I kept all the crushed coral that we had in the 220s and I put them, uh, put all that crushed coral as a base layer, not knowing what fish are gonna go in here, just knowing like crushed coral is always good to have and it's good for buffering and you know, lots of good qualities. And then I on top of that, I put some neutral color aquarium gravel and threw in some uh, manzanita wood that I had in another tank. I got see, these river rocks that I had and I just threw in some plants. The goal with this tank is to let those plants really kind of take off and grow. So we're not gonna put any fish in here for at least a month or two. And what I'm gonna do, there will be a lid, I'm gonna make some lids for this, is we're gonna take those blue topaz cichlids that you guys have hardly ever seen on this channel because they are so skittish. They hide all the time. My idea is to put them, take them out of the 40 once this is all done, put them in here. Maybe having them higher off the ground is gonna make them less skittish. There's more space in here because they're currently in a 40 breeder as well, so that might help. And I'm gonna put less hiding spots in here. So there's the wood and the rocks and then um, the plants that will be here naturally, but I'm not gonna put in like the little huts that I had in the other tank. So. We'll see how that goes. Basically, this tank is going to be a planted aquarium with the blue topaz cichlids. If those don't work, or if I'm still not enjoying them, because I haven't been enjoying them, to be honest, just because I don't see them. So if that doesn't work, then I'll rehome those, and then we'll do something different with this tank. This is the 40 gallon breeder that has those blue topaz cichlids. They're very cool fish, they're colorful, they spawn. I've got a couple of fry that grew up that are large now, they're adults or, or juvenile adults. This tank right here, we are going to obviously not have those fish in there once we do. So I think what I wanna do is I think I wanna do goldfish. I haven't kept like a fancy goldfish in like 30 years, I wanna say longer than probably 35 years. I was a kid the last time I had fancy goldfish. Now I have goldfish outside in the pond and everything, but I've not kept fancies in a long time. And I think that might be fun in here. Uh, it is a little bit cooler down below. This is a heated room, but it is a little bit cooler down here. So what I might do is just run this as an open top tank, obviously ch change out all the substrate and everything like that. So I think that's what I wanna do. Again, let me know down below in the comments if you think there is a better idea about what I should do with this tank, but I'm kind of feeling goldfish. Now, if you're like, well, you should do, you know, a cichlid or this kind of fish. Now, don't forget, we've got those fish all over this fish room and we have no goldfish. For one, it'll help eat all the duckweed, which will be good because this, if I pull off this little thing here, you can see that the whole top is duckweed. So obviously a goldfish is gonna help eat the gut duckweed uh, pretty quickly. So there's a little mini tour of the fish room, a few tanks that we've got uh, that we've changed already or tanks that we will be changing in the near future. So let me know down below in the comments also, what is your favorite transformation? Was it the 125 that used to be an Oscar tank that's now a Tanganyikan tank? Do you like the 3D background? Do you like the coral? Do you like the fact that we got rid of those 220s and we've got that 60 breeder there? And then if you do have some ideas on fish that you think I should keep in the 29 gallon, and possibly the goldfish, or maybe even with the topaz cichlids in that 60 breeder, let me know down below in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, share if you feel like it, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Check out this video right here.